Hello friends and welcome to another episode of CTR TV. Our guest today is a very distinguished man and someone I'm very, very pleased to have not only on our program but also in the parish preaching at Mass for the pandemic. He is Father Nick Meisel. He teaches scripture at St. Mark's College, the subject that he studied in Rome. He and I have one thing in common. We studied at the same university in Rome, but there the similarity ends, and I can help you understand it with an old joke. We used to say in Rome that if you wanted to come to the Gregorian University and see Europe, study canon law. If you wanted to come to the Gregorian and see Italy, study church history. If you wanted to come and see Rome, study theology. But if you wanted to come and see the four walls of your room, study scripture. And that is what you did, Father Nick. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Monsignor Craig. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good to be here. You worked and rather hard during those years. I did, I did, yeah, I did. But actually, I wasn't at the Greg. I was at the Pontifical Biblical Institute. Oh, that's worse. I know it is worse. That's far worse. Yeah, yeah. We oh, looked my. down upon us at the Gregoriana. I know that. We just went to your to your cafe there for coffee. No, we stood in awe of the people <sighs> at the Biblicum. I don't know. This is a place where they cannot possibly do anything without four languages being kept up in the air like jugglers balls. You were at the Biblicum. Yes. Oh yeah, my. There's no no coffee bar at all. No, 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 no coffee bar. It's pretty bad. No free time. Well, um, there's some, but yeah. My yeah. sympathies to you. I Thank didn't you. I Thank thought you. you were at my alma mater, which by the way, these two institutions are several hundred yards apart right, right. and both run by the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, oh my golly. I didn't know. I, I I'm dumbfounded now and I, I <laughs> I don't know what to say because <laughs> you know too many things and too much. No, 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 no. But in any case, before we talk about what you, you know, what you know, what you've learned about the Bible, can you talk to us a little bit about the importance of Scripture in the life of the church? Mm. Because certainly that's got to be the starting point for your ministry now as a, as a teacher, not right. simply the content of Scripture, but mm. its place in, 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 the, in the church. Can you talk a bit about that, Father Nick? Yeah, sure. So like... Um, the Bible is, is probably the most famous book out there, or at least one of them. So even for people who have no faith, the Bible is something interesting, confusing, strange at times. Um, but for us, obviously, as Christians, as Catholics, we believe that the Bible is the Word of God. So God speaks to us. It's the, the record of the interaction between God and God's people. And as well, then we get to know the person of Jesus Christ in the Scriptures, especially in the Gospels. So, yeah, when we go back to the scriptures, we really go to the source of our faith, something that's fundamental. It's a book unlike any other. Uh, and I think what I always tell my students, like whatever the level, hopefully my goal at the end is that they find out that the Bible is more beautiful, but also kind of strange, challenging than they thought going in, which I think is the case. That's what I found studying it more. Like I loved the Bible beforehand, but the more I studied it, the more I found, okay, it's beautiful, but it's strange, it's complicated. There's things there that are very, very bizarre. And yeah, it's, it's, I think, quite an exciting thing just to read as an individual, but also to study. I think it's quite, yeah, it's fascinating. People sometimes, even, even Christians, sometimes struggle with the Old Testament mm -hmm. ferocity of God. Right, right, right. Yeah. And do your students sometimes confront you with that question? Oh, yeah. I, I, actually, I think it's helpful sometimes just to pick passages that are, are difficult because... I think sometimes like, yeah, we want to talk about beautiful passages, but when we come to face to face with a passage that's kind of like puzzling where, yeah, so God and, and that it seems like God is being very violent, the book of Joshua, for example. And yeah, when we, when we look at a beautiful passage, we can kind of get what scripture is about. But when we come face to face with a passage that we read it and we're like, what is going on here? That's I think when we really learn more. So yeah, definitely I, I would kind of push those passages more on students, maybe too much. I think I have a problem maybe <laughs> that I like it too much, that sort of thing. But yeah, I, I like presenting those passages because then it helps us to understand, yeah, it's so important to know the context, especially of what is happening. Um, yeah, what's happening in the culture around there so we can understand it. And without that, then like if we don't, then we can make big problems in interpreting the Bible and come across thinking that God likes violence God commands genocide, and then when we think that that's okay, then it has all sorts of, well, it has historically had problems. But yeah, so definitely the students, 
uh, yeah, bring, sometimes they have those questions, maybe they've read them online or from their friends or something like that, but I like to kind of just like choose passages like that, in addition to nice ones, beautiful ones, inspiring ones, but just to, to choose those to read through and to see like, okay, well, what's going on here? How can we understand, how could this be the word of God? When I go to the chapel to pray or to mm. the church to pray, I generally do not take with me the code of canon law. Right, right. There's not a lot of food for prayer in the code, though there's a few places, but it's not a prayer book. Mm. You obviously spend some time in the church or chapel with the Bible. Mm. Does it sometimes cause a problem that you're reading it as a, a scholar and also as a, as a Christian? Is, is that sometimes a, a, yeah. a spiritual challenge? Yeah, I know. I think like when we started studying at the Biblicum there, um, it's sort of you come in and you start like picking apart the Bible, dissecting it, seeing, okay, maybe this passage is related to this other text you find in Babylon or whatever. So it can be difficult for your faith to say like, okay, this idea that you have that this is God's word, which we believe can become a bit, you know, like, well, what, what is happening is more complicated. So yeah, that's definitely a, can be a challenge. Uh, but I find really helpful, like being in ministry, preaching, um, being in high schools, then it, it becomes like, yeah, then we read the Bible. Like the Bible has meaning and value for anybody. It doesn't, you don't have to be, you know, like that's who it was written for. It's just regular people to begin with. So I find that really helpful, like to counterbalance, to say like, okay, I have to walk up there on Sunday or if I go to the high school to come up with a message. Like what is the message here from this passage that can inspire us, can challenge us, can console us? So that, that I find is like really um, valuable and something I love and is kind of indispensable for me. Otherwise it can become like, yeah, you're just picking apart. Think, well, it doesn't have to be that way, but there's that kind of risk. I have a book of homilies by the former rector of your school, hmm. Cardinal Venois. Oh, wow. Well. However you say that. And uh, his homilies are as simple and faithful mm. and untechnical as you could ever want, mm. which may be that he was writing in Italian, which wasn't his first language. Even I can read his Italian, but I think clearly there has to be that ability mm. to, to see the text at a simple spiritual level as well as at the deeper mm. scholarly level, for sure. Yeah, I think there was a uh, former rector also, Cardinal Martini, was famous, I think, what was he, Milan or something, for yeah. um, Lexio Divina he would do for young people especially. So. Yeah, to, to have that balance is important because it's who it was written for, right? It was not. So this is a TV show, not a serious mm -hmm. kind of scholarly conversation. Right, right. So I'm going to ask you, have you a favorite Old Testament passage? A favorite one? Um, well, I really like um, the book of Exodus in general. Like I, I spent some time, time studying that, but I don't think like a passage specifically. I could have asked you a favorite book. So yeah, Exodus, sure. yeah. Exodus sure. is a good let's, answer. Let's do Exodus for now, yeah. Powerful story. Yep. Yeah. And fundamental to our Christian understanding of certain things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, Jesus is, is like there was, it's kind of like, you know, if there's a great hockey player that arises, like okay, this is the new Wayne Gretzky, right? So, like it's kind of a, a crude example, but that's kind of typology, right? Like Jesus is, you know, the new Moses, the new Elijah, all these things. So especially that Jesus is the new Moses, that he brings about this new Passover and, you know, with the Eucharist and every, yeah, it's, it's just, I mean, it's at the heart probably too of, of Jesus, how he understood his mission, what, what he was doing. So now, mm. have you a favorite Old Test, a New Testament book? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm doing some more study now on, on on um, First Corinthians, so I'm I'm kind of getting into that, and I I hadn't before I, I lo love the Gospels, and I think maybe that's like as Catholics, when we look at the New Testament, that's like primary for us, or maybe for some other Christians, like the letters of Saint Paul are seen as these things. So it's been it's been fun getting into Saint Paul more and his letters, because I, I like things that are kind of earliest, you know, kind of. The Gospels come later, but St. Paul's writings are the earliest we have in the New Testament. And the guy's like working things out and there's all sorts of crazy problems and everything happening. And uh, yeah, I just find that really, yeah, that's kind of neat. It's just the new, like he's, no one's answered these questions before. So he's Paul's letters sort of tell us that current problems are not something new. No, no, we have it good actually. <laughs> if you look at what things <laughs> were like, yeah. No, I mean, every, every, every generation has its own thing. But it didn't take very long after Jesus mm. for things to become difficult. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, and you get Acts of the Apostles has these passages where they're always like, you know, this golden age and 
they shared everything in common they're praying and everything and then it's kind of that's kind of you know there's obviously truth to that but they're painting a bit of a picture whereas yeah paul's letters they're showing all kinds of yeah wonderful things happening but also real challenges going on and the holy spirit gave the church the ability to meet the challenges yeah and i think that's what's to see like that it's very realistic is that the holy spirit works and brings good through yeah we need to cooperate but th things are messy right that's that's like our life our relationships the church like it's always kind of been the case it seems how many i lose track of time how many years have you been at st mark's two yeah i'm going to my third year now yes right. and have you enjoyed the teaching i enjoyed it yeah so it, they have over there like St. Mark's is more the graduate courses and I teach a couple undergraduate courses as well each year so at, at Corpus Christi. At Corpus Christi. Right. And yeah. what would those courses be? Uh, they have like introductory Bible courses as well. Uh, previously, it's fun like there will be a different audience for the Bible obviously, but to do, I've been doing like a math course just um, just kind of for fun, a simple one, but I did engineering before seminary so it's a very basic math course, but it, it's like a, a kind of a yeah, just kind of a different audience of students. So I try and do one course of the undergrads that's like... You're teaching math. I, I, I am, but a very simple one. So I was wrong at the beginning by saying we had anything in common. Ah. Now I'm even writer. We have less and less oh, in common. Oh, you don't like... Yeah. Oh, my golly. I'm, I'm terrified of math. I'm okay. okay. I, C.S. Lewis is my hero because he could barely graduate from university because he said around every corner ah. that lurked that dreadful monster right, mathematics. Right. Yeah, so the course I teach is for people, well, uh, who kind of are afraid of math. That's like it would be if you need one college level course for math, that's the one. So a lot of it is just like with students trying to get them to feel comfortable. I'm not saying you should take it. But I would, no, I would <laughs> sign up except that since you're offering me a choice between math right, and right. introduction to the Bible, yeah. I feel I'd be obliged to take your course on introduction to the right, Bible. Yeah, it might be more relevant, but <laughs> who knows. So when you do the introduction to the Bible course, what, what's your starting point? What's your launching pad? Yeah, uh, so I have, I have courses sometimes that are just the whole Bible. Uh, at the graduate level, it's a little bit different because everybody coming there is, well, a lot of Catholic school teachers or the deacon candidates. So I, I, I start with, you know, um, say the graduate level more, I got to give some background, right? Like, so kind of what is the Bible and how did we get it? So like, why did, it's, it didn't fall from heaven? So a little bit talking about you know the books that are there how they came to be and a bit of the context like the historical background i i think about it kind of like biblical texts are like a meme you know like the memes like that when we read a meme when we look at it it like makes sense to us it'll be like a vignette from a movie and then we replace it but like to understand a meme requires so much background information like you have to know what a meme is you have to know what the movie is all these different things and biblical texts are like that so there's it was written for people who understood these things. So we have to start with that so we can apply it down the road. So usually I start with a bit of that sort of background and then we'll get into, for the graduate students, especially Dave Erebum, because that, that document from the Second Vatican Council uh, really is like our, our compass for navigating texts about, you know, what is the Bible? How do we approach it? How do we interpret it? So I want to give that sort of lens. And then, and then I would just kind of go and, these are, are, are more or less like survey courses. Uh, except the, the one that's like the whole Bible in a semester is I try and make links between the old and new. And the undergraduates, it's a little bit different. Most of them are, well, you get a good number of Catholics, but at really varying levels of commitment, sometimes non-Catholics, sometimes I've had some people who are non-believers. So yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's more you want to kind of talk about big questions, right? And, and give them also rat, like, why should you study the Bible now? Yeah, so maybe it's like, okay, well, we still live in a country where 60-something percent say they're Christian. A lot of political arguments are made using the Bible, so this course might help you to better understand that and maybe even criticize certain things or in, in like a way of kind of, you know, to, to navigate better through things. So, yeah, and, and with the undergraduates especially, I like doing, you know, I think, it's, I think we learn when we have to deal with difficult problems, difficult texts. So I like choosing weird stuff. I'd love to be in your class, is all I could say. Well, not your math class. Probably. But I would, I would really like to well, be in that class. Now, you mentioned in, in passing mm. the Vatican II document called mm. De Verbum, which is, is on the Word of God. Was it a, a major sort of sea change, a major um, 
uh, addition to mm. what we knew and thought about the study and use of the Bible in the church? Yeah, I, so it's definitely was building on previous uh, encyclicals, especially for the last, you know, like, hun well, not even that long, maybe like 75 years or something. Uh, the field of biblical studies is kind of one where there's been a lot of, um, you know, tensions with uh, biblical scholars who are Catholic, right, and kind of leading the way, but then also, yeah, the magisterium, there's kind of like, okay, they go a bit too far this way and there's some pushback. So, yeah, there was a process, especially to accept, you know, what they call like the historical critical method, which is like a toolbox of, you know, we need to learn the original languages. We have to be aware of different uh, backgrounds that are there. So Dave Verbum sort of like cemented um, an ongoing development that was already there. Uh, so it was, yeah, it, it, and, it's, and it's indispensable now. It's the highest like level of teaching we have on sacred scripture, but how we should approach it. So yeah, it, it, it is very, very important, very, very new in that way, but is, is developing from, from documents that came before it. Well, this has been illuminating somewhat terrifying. <laughs> the the uh, scope of your studies is obviously very extensive, but the ministry you're doing is essential, I think, not only for the average student, but certainly you're teaching also the men preparing for the diaconate. Right, right. Um, and can you maybe say a few words about how they seem to approach uh, the subject in your classes? Yeah, I think what's been funnest, well, because you have the, the deacon candidates, you have the wives in there also, and I, I really love the the spectrum of students you have there. They're kind of, they're very, first of all, like quite engaged. They enjoy participating in conversations, contributing to the class. And there's a lot of, like as you know, like a lot of different backgrounds. They're coming from very different places, different careers. And you know, some have done graduate level studies. Others haven't, but they still are grasping with this information and have very interesting things to say. So I've enjoyed those classes because of, yeah, you, you have, they're so, everybody's very different, right? and and when people, different people read a different text, they're gonna see things that I don't and that other people don't. And that is very enriching for everybody. So I like that, the, the broad perspective that we get there from the different students. Father Nick Meisel, thank you very much for a being pleasure. with us. Thank you. CTR TV. Thank you. Thank you.